Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business and let's wake up the football guy. Oh, I keep forgetting. Force of habit. They're down here, down low. Also, I have a new addition and another piece that's actually coming. Shout out to Cowboys Up North for sending me this Super Bowl VI coffee mug. This is truly a treasure that I will definitely um, be very careful with, and that is truly irreplaceable. I'm not putting any coffee in that one because, you know, I might just break that one. In fact, I don't know where my big coffee mug is this morning. Um, I didn't have coffee because I had my physical, and so... Um, I just don't know where it is. I, I got to find it because I need more coffee than this, bro. All right, so by now, you know that Dak Prescott has a shoulder strain. Um, they don't think that this is anything major, but it could force the Cowboys to do without him for a couple of weeks. So what does that mean? We talk about two weeks. All right, today is the third practice in a row. The second padded practice, we already know D-Law's not there. We know that Amari Cooper's not there, um, and, and so on. Some other guys that aren't there able to practice right now. Uh, we have Double G uh, that's there, and we also have Ben DiNucci. Good thing for those guys is it'll give them some more reps. Um, the question is, do the Cowboys need to think about signing another veteran, another camp body to help pass the ball around because there's going to be a lot of passing with only two quarterbacks to go. But what does that mean? So like we said, we have practice today. The Cowboys are off on Friday. Then they have practice Saturday and Sunday. They're off on Monday. Practice on Tuesday. Travel day on Wednesday to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Game when, uh, Thursday night. No practice Saturday. One practice against the Rams, excuse me, no practice on Friday. One practice against the Rams on Saturday, and then Sunday and Monday, no practices. So when we look at getting all the way to August 8th, um, actually might as well say to August 10th, um, there's not that many practices. Now, we knew that Dak Prescott was not going to be playing in the Hall of Fame game. I, I doubt any of the regular starters would be. That's going to be a great opportunity to get the young guys out there and get this, them some experience. And it's not going to be like a full on on game. It's, it's really a glorified scrimmage. Let's be clear on that. Um, so we weren't looking at him playing anyway, which means those three days right there between the travel day, the game day, the practice after that, and then, of course, it's just the Rams, and then there's two more days off. So we're not talking about actually missing a lot of time. Why is here? We're talking about, let me count, to just, just to get us to Tuesday the 10th, we're talking about the practice against the Rams. We're talking about practice on Tuesday. We're talking about practice on Sunday, Saturday, and today. So basically, we're talking for two weeks five practices it's not as much as you think it is and there's a lot of time in there that they wouldn't be practicing that he can really get back in so i would look for maybe that august 10th um and, and here's the other great part too you could actually just say screw august 10th um where they have the practice that's closed to uh, the public it's only for the military and then they have no practice uh, they have practice on wednesday and then thursday no practice and they break camp so it's conceivable that you just don't bring Dak in until you get back to the star. And I'm okay with that because you still have three preseason games and the rest of the time. It's not like we have a lot of players that are missing, you know, that are new that we're bringing in that, you know, they don't know the offensive stuff. Dak knows these guys. Every one of these guys he's thrown the football to. And it's the same offense that Kellen Moore has been running for several years. So from the standpoint of that, and one other thing I'll put in there is most quarterbacks don't play in preseason at all, with the exception of like Tom Brady. Aaron Rodgers doesn't. Carson Wentz doesn't. Most of them don't. So you're talking about trying to make sure your quarterback is as healthy as possible by the time the season gets here. So now this brings in the thought of, Blake Bortles, who was signed by the Green Bay Packers when all the stuff with Aaron Rodgers started going around. 
And since Aaron Rodgers has come back, they've released Blake Bortles. Now, the interesting thing about Blake Bortles, um, you know, a lot of y'all say, oh, man, Blake Bortles, shit. I'm not sure that Blake Bortles will make that big a difference on our team, more so than, say, Andy Dalton. But Blake Bortles has played quite a lot of games in, in the NFL, at least in comparison to some guys. Um, he started 73 games, okay? Now, we're not going to say that the record is great. They're 24 and 49, but definitely with the downtrodden uh, franchise being the Jacksonville Jaguars, with the exception of having, like, you know, one really good year in there where he went 10 and 6. They had a great defense, which definitely helped him along. My man Calais Campbell was in there. They made the playoffs and, and got close. They got close. But for the most part, I'm talking about 24 out of 49. I mean, 24 and 49 losses. But again, Jacksonville. Um, we're talking about 17,649 yards, 103 touchdowns, 75 interceptions. And for those that are like kind of saying, you know, uh, he's kind of a journeyman quarterback. I'm not sure that Ryan Fitzpatrick is much more of an upgrade than what Blake Bartles is. If you're kind of trashing Blake Bartles, you kind of have to trash Ryan Fitzpatrick as well. Um, again, both journeyman quarterbacks. I guess the advantage of Ryan Fitzpatrick is he started in eight, ga oh, eight games for eight different teams, which I think is an NFL record. So I'm not sure that the Cowboys will rush to sign Blake Bortles. Um, I think the Cowboys, as Stephen Jones has said on many occasions, that they trust their free agents more than others. They'd rather have somebody who's been here and been in the system that knows the system as opposed to bringing in Blake Bortles. The reality is, is bringing in Blake Bortles at this point, if Dak is healthy in two weeks, would just be released more than likely. Or, or end up having Ben DiNucci or Garrett or Jason uh, Double G being released or, or as well. But I don't see the Cowboys per se doing that one. I think they'll look at these five practices and say, well, you know, you guys are going to have extra reps and get that together. To me, that's what I would look at right now because the reality is, is unless you've got Sean Watson or Aaron Rodgers as a backup, it's not really going to matter much. Who's back there? The reality is, is you have to get Dak Prescott healthy and keep him healthy to make it through the season if you have a chance. I know the Eagle fans will say, well, we had Nick Foles that did it. Well, Nick Foles is a streaky quarterback that had a great team around him, and it was part of that perfect storm that elevated the Eagles for that one season to win that Super Bowl. And you look at where Nick Foles is now, still just a journeyman quarterback. All right, y'all, we got all kinds of things we're getting ready to, to do because one week from today, right now, we'll be halfway to, well, no, beyond halfway to Canton. We'll be on our way to Canton to be covering, whoo, the Dallas Cowboys' first preseason game. I don't know about you. I cannot wait. Hope you all have a great day, and I will see you guys probably in the workshop or around here as I finish collecting all my gear. And you know how we roll. Commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. And the only thing else I got to say is.